Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for Friday, July 24th, 2020. We're going to be talking about HashiCorp Vault and the Vault certification today. Specifically, we're going to be talking about tokens, which I started last Friday, and I'm going to continue this Friday. Now, you might notice that my good old-fashioned mic is back. I listened to the audio from yesterday, and it was okay, but I think there's room for improvement. I want to do some signal processing on that lav mic to get it the, the same sultry sound that you hear through this much, much nicer and more expensive mic. So I'll see what I can do. I'm getting a splitter box so I can feed both into, I have a, what's the brand? DBX 286S preamp that I use that removes some noise and, and does some compression. And it also helps with the EQ on the mic a little bit. And I think I'm going to use the same thing for the lav mic as well and see, get it as good as I can. Anyway, so <laughs> that's not really important. Uh, don't have any housekeeping items for today. I just, you know, before we get into the topic at hand, I just wanna check in with you. How you doing? Welcome to Friday. We like, we made it y'all. We made it to Friday. That is <laughs> frankly an accomplishment for this week. It has been an intense week of benchmark testing, creating videos, creating content, and spending entirely too many too much time in meetings that uh, may or may not have had real value. So uh, I know that's something that you should always be on the guard for is meetings that don't actually add value to you or your organization. You have to be able to say no to meetings. I understand sometimes you get a meeting request from someone who's a little higher up than you and you feel weird turning it down. You know, check with your manager and make sure that they'll back you if you do turn down a meeting that is just not important. Because some people just like to book meetings because it makes them look like they're busy and it's getting in the way of you accomplishing your goals. So you should be able to decline a meeting without having it be an HR incident. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> random tangent on there. Let's talk about the topic at hand. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. We're talking about HashiCorp Vault tokens. All right, so tokens we talked about last week. Tokens are the unit of access that you use in HashiCorp Vault. Basically, everything reflects back to tokens. The first thing you get when you set up Vault, you get a token, and that is, you know, pretty useful. Last week, we talked about the high-level objective, which was assess Vault tokens, and we talked about a few of the sub-objectives, describing what a Vault token is, differenti differentiating between service and batch tokens, and describing the root token use and life cycle. So if you didn't watch that video, I'll put a card up there so you can click and watch that first because otherwise, you know, you might feel a little behind. But regardless, today I would like to cover the next couple objectives, which is define token accessors and explain time to live. Those are both really important concepts and I wanna dedicate a whole episode to just those two things. So let's start with token accessors. What is that? Well, when you create a token, it gets a few different properties. One of them is the actual token ID, and that's what you use to authenticate to Vault. So that's a pretty important value. Now, you don't want to give that to everybody who might have a stake in this token. So instead, there's a second value, which is called the token accessor. That's a value that could be given to a system that's managing tokens so that it can renew the token it can revoke the token, and it can ask for information about the token, but it never actually gets that token ID. So if you had an automation system that's creating tokens for virtual machines or containers or human beings, you might not want that thing to have access to the token ID itself. You might just want to give that the accessor ID so it can take care of some automated tasks or check on the status of different tokens that's what it's for. It's a management tool. It's almost like the username of your token without giving you the password. If you want to think of it that way, that probably makes sense. So let's jump over to uh, my screen and I can, <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, Drudgus has said no Friday meetings and I support that. No meetings on Friday whenever possible. <laughs> so let's jump over to my screen share and I've got a terminal open here. On one tab, I've got vault server already running. And if we scroll up here, the one thing we see is you get an unseal key and a root token. Now, this is a dev server, so there's only one unseal key. And we think we talked about keys already, so I'm not worried about that. 
but the first thing it gives you is a root token so you can log into the vault server and do things with it and i've already done that i've set my i've logged into the vault server on this other tab so let's go through the process of creating a token because that would probably be the easiest way to see what that actually let's let's do vault token just to see what commands exist for vault token and we've got capabilities create so obviously create a token you've got lookup so look up information about a token renewing a token lease and revoking a token and any children associated with that token so let's just do vault token lookup and well and if i type it right this gives me information about the token that i'm currently logged in with that's what vault does it goes okay you're logged in with this token i'll give you information and you'll see one of the things in there is this accessor value so you could use this accessor value to get information about the token. Now this is a root token. I don't want to mess around with that. So let's create ourselves a new token. So we'll do vault token create, and let's give it a policy. Uh, we'll just give it the default policy, hit enter, boom. I've got a new token that I could give to somebody else for use and it would have the default policy associated with it. And you'll see I've got this token accessor here. Awesome. Now, if I do a vault token lookup and I pass it the argument accessor and give it that accessor ID, now it's going to give me some information about that token. One of the things we're about to talk about is the creation of the TTL in general. So let's talk about TTL and how we interact with that now, because that's the other half of this video basically is, is that TTL because TTLs can be a little bit confusing and I, I want to really try to elucidate that. So going back to me, what is a TTL? It's a time to live. It's how long is this token valid for? And the question you might immediately have is where does, when you create a token, how does it get that TTL number? If you don't explicitly tell it what the time to live value should be, First, it looks at the mount. Well, first, it looks at the authentication endpoint that is being created through that token. So, if you were generating a token through LDAP authentication or username and password, it would look at that and see if there's a TTL associated with the group or that authentication method. If there, if there is, that's the TTL it gets. If there's nothing there, it'll look at the mount point for tokens and go, okay. Is there a max TTL associated with that mount point? If there is, okay, that's my TTL. If there's nothing associated with that mount point, and that's kind of an enterprise feature, then it'll look at the system configuration and see what the max TTL is for that. And it'll use that for its max TTL, or for its TTL, I should say, because there's time to live and then there's max time to live. We'll get to that in a second. So if we go back to the screen that we were looking at before, and we look at what the TTL for this token is, the creation TTL. So when it was created, it set a time to live of 768 hours. Where did it get that value? It got that from the system configuration because I don't have it set anywhere else. Now, what if I wanted to set a different TTL for a new token? So let's create a new token. And this time we'll pass it. Uh, let me find that command because uh, I don't remember the exact argument. Create. Okay, so it's just TTL equals and then a time increment. So we're giving this one five minutes. So I'll create a new one. It has a TTL of five minutes. And if I do a token lookup here, it doesn't actually tell you the TTL information in that initial output. If I look at that, I can see the creation TTL. So the TTL that was set when I created that token is five minutes. How much time do I have left? I have four minutes and 50 seconds. And if I look it up again, now it's down to four minutes and 38 seconds. That will keep counting down. When that TTL is expired, my token is also expired and it's no longer valid. There is another setting in here, which is the maximum time to live. So what's the maximum time to live that I could request from this token based off of its creation time. That max TTL can either be set explicitly or it will inherit that property from the max TTL that's set for the system, for the mount point, or for the particular authentication method you're using. So I could say I want the TTL to be five minutes, but if I request a renewal of that token for a longer TTL, it cannot exceed 
whatever the max TTL is for this particular token type. And the TTL is set at either creation time or renewal time. So let's actually go ahead and renew a token. So we're going to renew the uh, we're going to renew this same token. So I'll go do vault token renew. Now I've renewed the token. I'll look it up again, and I can see that the TTL has been that I set at creation time was five minutes. It's still five minutes, and the TTL for this token is four minutes and fifty eight seconds. So it's counting down again. The other thing you'll see in here is there is an expire time, and that expire time should be the same as the uh, five minutes plus the last renewal time, which it is. The last renewal was 1226. The expire time is 1231. So that's basically how TTL works. It can get a little confusing. The important thing to know is that TTL is set at creation or renewal time, and the TTL... Oh. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much. It is covering the prompt. Oh, that was well. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to get rid of that. Yes, I want to remove the logo. Sorry about that. <laughs> Screen share problems. So um, the TTL is configured when it's created, or it's and it's updated when it's renewed. And the TTL cannot be longer than the max TTL wherever that is inherited from. You can also set a max TTL for a specific token, and then that token can't go over whatever that max TTL is. If you request something that's higher than that max TTL, then Vault will say, nope, that's beyond what I can set, but I will set it right up to whatever that maximum is, and that's what I'll set it to. So that is token time to live and token accessors. I think I covered those pretty well. What I'll do next week is I will round up this tokens thing, we're going to talk about periodic tokens in some detail. And we're going to talk about use cases for tokens, and I believe and orphaned tokens, we're going to have to talk about orphan tokens and those sad, sad orphans and what happens when a token is orphaned. So we're going to talk about those three topics to round out this objective in next week's post. I'll be on vacation during that time. So I'm going to pre record it, and then post it on Friday. So you'll see it on Friday but it won't be live. Uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, until next time, enjoy your weekend. Thank you 